ready for some vibes, mm -hmm. self love vibes. Self love and rose. It is, yeah. Rose is one of the herbs for like self love and like wearing your crown. Ooh. So I guess we should tell people. So this is what we're starting with. Some self love spray. Just to feel good. And you have to show me your shoes. Oh. Because oh. they're cute. Oh. Mm -hmm. I'm wearing you converse today. Ooh. And the socks. Yep, handed socks. Ooh. Handed socks. Alright. I'm being the same as normal. Our our normal. Shoot. Well, I don't have those, so I'm really sad. Well, we should get them for you. I know. Stay our trading post. Are you going to take me there? <laughs> Maybe. Okay. Okay. I guess we should right. say hi, right? Hi! Hi, and welcome to another episode of From Salem with Love. I'm Anna Campos. I own Circle of Stitches in Salem, Massachusetts. And I'm Jacob, and I am Fiber Dreams by Jacob on Instagram. So thank you for joining us for another episode, and thank you for all the love you've been showing us. It seems like folks are really enjoying um, our ridiculousness, so yeah, that's our very exciting. Crazy shenanigans and antics. Yeah. So let's, I guess, start talking about what we're wearing today. Ooh. So I'm actually wearing a sweater that I knit many years ago. Um, this is Tinder by Jared Flood, and it was called Tinder before the app existed, and now I feel weird saying that. <laughs> Okay, at least it wasn't called Grinder. That's anyway. right. That was me. I was like, man, he's a new pattern. So it's like a little jacket. And he designed it for Brooklyn Tweed Shelter, but I knit it in Malabrigo Rios, which I love, obviously. And yeah, it's actually knit in pieces and seamed with a half stitch selvage in a raglan, which this is. I kind think of... one of my favorite ones that you you have that oh, I've seen. You. Every single time I see it. Now I know what the pattern is, so now I can go and try to start making one myself. You're going to go on Tinder? I'm going to go on Tinder. I'm gonna swipe something, and I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how it works. I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know. Anyway. Wait, wait. Maybe seam left. Seam left. <laughs> <laughs> what? I don't know what's going on. No, like on the apps when you do you swipe left, swipe right. Mm-hmm. Well, that's how it was like six years ago when I was on them. I don't know. I don't know anymore. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> so that's what I'm wearing, and we're both wearing. Shift cowls. Ooh. Yeah. So what did you make yours in? So mine is made out of, I actually only used one of the spin cycle seam, um, schemes. And then I did two different Malabrigos, um, lettuce, and then I, the red one that I always go for. Marte? Marte. Mm -hmm. So I did the lettuce, Marte, and don't know the color green that I used for spin cycle, so. Um, I think it might be Cataclysm. Does that ring a bell? It might. Oh, we'll add it in the notes. We'll figure later. it out. Because we always plan this so well. We do. Clearly. And so, for folks who don't know this pattern, this is the Shift Cowl by Andrew Mari. God, I promise we don't intend to like wear her patterns all the time, but they're good patterns. Mm -hmm. And this was designed for Spin Cycle Dyed in the Wool originally. But as you know, you can do it with other yarns. Jacob did it with Malabrigo. Mm -hmm. Um, but one of the questions that I get the most is about how to pick colors for a shift cowl. So I wanted to offer some tips on that. Um, but I guess first I'm going to tell you that we actually have some kits that are pre-selected with colors for you in case you don't want to have to pick them. So we have a bunch of different color combinations that come pre-packed. But... Um, I wanted to give you a little bit of advice because until I knitted mine, I didn't really know how it was going to come together. And the colors that I used were Rusted Rainbow, um, Burning Sensation, and Summer Love. And you can see that my cowl has like a lot of, do you mind holding it up for me? Sure. <laughs> that my cowl has like a really strong contrast here between the two parts. and. Uh, you know, I knitted this without knowing how it was going to play out, and now I understand it a little better. And so when you're knitting, you have colors A, B, and C. And so what ends up happening is color A is happening back here, color B is happening here in the front, and color C only shows up in the little blips that are throughout. And so my advice would be, if you're trying to pick color combinations, to use um, colors that are of a similar saturation or depth in the background, and then have something that contrasts throughout so that you don't get this kind of extreme banding like I did, unless you really want to. And the other thing with that cowl is to make sure that you gauge swatch that cowl and make sure that you're on that, um, on like the actual gauge because it will be a little bit more difficult when you're doing it. Like you might not have enough yarn if you don't gauge swatch it correctly. 
um, yeah, and the other part too. So mine, when I did mine, so I will probably lose my hat when I um, do this, but I did not. Um, this, I made this like probably year one of knitting, like when I was still kind of learning and everything. So yours was um, like steamed or or yeah, however you decided to block it. I did my blocking afterwards. So mine actually isn't probably the exact schematics that it's supposed to be. It's a little yeah, bit tighter. Yeah. Um, oh, you told you I was going to lose my hat. <laughs> um, but yeah, so if we hold them together, it's not like a crazy difference, but you can kind of... No, actually, they're pretty similar. They're pretty similar, but mine's a little bit like in. <laughs> yeah, well, so that brings us to, I guess, swatching in general. Uh, you know, one of my favorite topics in knitting, swatching and why you should swatch. Um, well, so first of all, you talked about steam blocking the swatch ahead of time, mm -hmm. right? And so one thing about swatching is like, first, yes, you should swatch. That's sort of non-negotiable because if you don't swatch ahead of time, you might end up doing a very large swatch in the form of your project, which you'll then find out you have to rip out. Mm -hmm. But um, you want to always block your swatch in the same way that you're going to wash the final piece because that's really how your fiber is going to be reacting. So if you're going to steam your final piece, steam your swatch. If you're going to like soak and hang your final piece, you should do that to your swatch so that you get the most accurate uh, representation possible. Um, but this leads me into, I guess, one of my knitting pet peeves. <laughs> Um, which is about gauge. Uh, you know, I've been working in the knitting industry for several years now. I've gotten to help and talk to a lot of knitters and there's uh, this one misconception that gets kind of repeated and I'm almost afraid to like say it because people feel really passionately about it, but um, <laughs> um, there's no such thing as knitting to gauge. Um, there's a lot of people when I'm trying to help them um, swatch for projects or pick needle sizes, I ask them, do you knit tight? Do you knit loose? How do you tend to knit? And they say, I knit to gauge. Um, that's not a thing. Uh, there is no universal gauge. Um, you need to swatch for every pattern because every person who designs has a different gauge. And so it's impossible for you to knit to gauge because designers aren't all knitting to the same gauge. Every person produces their own gauge. Um, so for example, I know that Hoki Locatelli tends to have a pretty loose gauge compared to other designers. And so uh, you know, I definitely need to swatch for her patterns and keep that in mind, but there are other designers who are much tighter knitters and I need to compensate for that and use smaller needle sizes. So um, I'm so sorry if you're one of those people who says that you knit to gauge. I really recommend that you uh, reconsider that stance. Well, and the other thing with that too, because I know with the cardigan that I was starting, I have a tendency of starting cardigans and never finishing them, but yeah. um, I was doing one of Ash's patterns, and um, I was doing it in, I think, the Harrisville Shetland, mm -hmm. and their gauge um, was, I think, a five, and I'm knitting it in a one. Yeah. And that can also be, it can be a combination of what my, how loosely I knit. It can also be that, although it's the same weight of fingerling, sometimes there's variations in the thickness of the finger, um, fingerling or like a worsted or something like that. Yeah. Um, those can also throw off your gauges. Yeah, too. and also if you're knitting with uh, different kinds of needles, it can make a difference. For example, I tend to knit on only metal needles except when I'm knitting linen, then I do it on wood because I just need it to be a little grippier or I struggle with gauge. Um, but, you know, it's just... Gift knitting just works better if you swatch and you really become aware of how you knit. And so I'm really hoping to slowly get people to kind of let go of that notion of knitting to gauge being a thing. And it's completely okay to knit 12 different swatches to make sure that you have the right size. Right, because it's better than knitting a whole sweater that exactly. doesn't Exactly, because then you end up like, you get sad when you block it. No one wants to have sad times <laughs> about bees. That's true. So anyway, so that's colors. my rant about that. So I also picked some new color combinations for Spin Cycle just to kind of show you how I go through the process of picking some colors. And so here is a new color combination, which I will be posting these as kits on the website um, after this because we got new colors in, which are gorgeous. And I'm a big purple person in addition to mustard. And so I picked these three here. And so what you'll see here is that I picked two colors that are sort of 
similar saturations, right? They're dark and there's one that's a little bit lighter. So I would pick these two as my background color and this would be sort of the lighter blips throughout. And then I would pick which color I want to be the one that shows up the most here. So if I want this to show up the most, this would be my color B, this would be my color A, right? And then I'd get this throughout. And so these colors are Wololo, Bruised Ego, I love their names on this. I know, right? They're so and fun. Nostalgia. So isn't that pretty? And so here is, oh, I'm dropping them on the floor. Here is another combination. All right, so this is Pick Your Poison, Absolute Zero. It's got some really beautiful purples. And Family Jewels, which is one of my favorites. And so you'll see here, I kind of did the same thing again, right? These two are darker and this one's a little bit lighter. So these would probably be my background color and let this be the lighter one throughout. No, one kind of had a funny comment on that name. <laughs> you know, especially the between, color with yeah, it. Yeah, family jewels and burning <laughs> sensation. Like, you what? know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and I here's composure. One. Here's my last combination. I tried to go for some blues. Um, and so here we have Overshadow. This is really nice saturated um, blues and cool purples. Another Family Jewel, just because I love that color. And Overpasses. And so what you can see with this one, you could actually go two ways with it. You could put these two in the background here for a darker cowl with lighter pops, or you could actually use these two for the background and then use this for the pops. But you sort of want to keep that in mind, right? You sort of want your background to be of similar tones and have something that kind of contrasts with it. It makes it like a fade. That's true. It is also true. So that's my advice for you on how to pick some colors for the shift cowl. And do you want to tell us about your hat? Oh, yeah. <laughs> tell me about your hat. All right, so <laughs> this is, so again, on the topic that seems to be the theme of this episode, gauge swatching. Um, <laughs> This was one of my first brioche projects that did not realize that brioche expands a lot when you put it in water and block it, so it's a little big. Um, but this is also an Andrea Mowry um, project, so we're, we're going with themes. Andrea Mowry and gauges. I guess so, yes. Not the ones for the ears. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but this is Harlow, and yes. I was wearing this strategically today because Andrea and Mary just barely put out um, the worsted version of Harlow. Nice. So um, I've also picked out some colors to show you for the worsted version of Harlow. Yay. Um, also, it's with spin cycle themes. But, I mean, who's not obsessed with spin cycle? And I'm sitting on the tag, so technical difficulty. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> I think I have a thing for devilish grin. And I feel like this would be wonderful with this Malabrigo black. I thought it was going to have a name I couldn't pronounce again. <laughs> so that'll give you a nice gothy looking Ooh. one. Yeah. All right. And then if y'all are like me and love your crazy colors, these two together. I'm obsessed with this lime green, apple green. Okay, so maybe it's not lime green, it's apple green. Radioactive apple. Yeah, they don't eat that apple. If you have an apple it's like that color. Mountain Dew. Mountain Dew. <laughs> um, and then Melancholia. We're not going to totally mispronounce the names like last episode. <laughs> and then my last one. Hold on. Can you guess? It's, 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 it's our favorite color. What could it be? <laughs> All right, here it is. And if y'all don't know what it was, Frank o um, Okra, or, oh, whatever. <laughs> Guess we're not going with that trend anymore. Yeah. And I'm gonna put my hat on because I just realized that my horrible hat hair was showing, sorry. And then there is, Stay Out of the Forest. Yeah, which they didn't used to have in the dream state, but now they do. And by the way, this is um, Spin Cycle Dream State, which is the worsted weight. Uh, unlike these, uh, this is dyed in the wool, which is mm -hmm. their sport weight. So that's very pretty. And then um, I picked some colors too. 
And so we're back to Family Jewels, now in the worsted weight. And I paired it with Malabrigo Rios in Sunset, because then this would really bring out like the pops of orange in the Family Jewels. And let's go for something a little sweet. This is Val Valentina by Malabrigo in Rios, and this is Nostalgia. Ooh. So those are some fun colors. And so we are very, very quickly approaching solstice, mm -hmm. right? And I wanted to reveal that, you know, we are almost sold out of our winter solstice fiber witch boxes. As of right now, we have four left. Um, and I wanted to show off some of the things that are in there. Uh, my beautiful friend Ash always makes us some tea to go in the boxes. Well, they have for the last four boxes. They've also made some soap for previous ones, but anyway. Um, <laughs> that's true. You can have tea in your mug. So this is a tea blend called Queen of Pentacles. So far, they've done all four tarot queens for us. It smells awesome. So this blend has honey bush, cacao husks, rooibos, roasted chicory root. Ooh. Very delicious. But the exciting thing that just arrived finally is the yarn from Five Borough Yarns, so uh, which is hand dyed it. by Lindsay Vega, who is an amazing. Ooh amazing dyer and woman of color placed out of Brooklyn and so she made for us this colorway called first day of winter and it's really gorgeous check this out oh. yeah Jeremy if you're watching this you should get one of these for Jacob mm -hmm. for the holidays I'm just saying hint hint I mean I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Waving hands. And so, um, I guess I haven't really explained what the fiber witch boxes are on here before. Uh, so, obviously, I'm based in Salem, Massachusetts, and one of the things that I've sort of come to explore over the years with my business is bringing a little bit of my personal witchcraft practice into um, the fiber arts, but in a way that is hopefully very non-denominational and very accessible to everyone. And so last year, sort of in peak pandemic times, um, you know, when we were very much shut down, I came up with this idea of putting together a uh, kit for Samhain, which is Halloween, uh, just bringing together a little bit of like, you know, witchy magic and knitting stuff. And so I put together this um, little box and I called some of my favorite fiber witches. And so I worked with Rochelle from Home Row Fiber Co, of course, with Ash from Sunflower Knit. Um, I worked with Katie Upchurch, who makes candles uh, in the next town over in Beverly. She goes by so much brighter. Um, and so these were things that were very much like, you know, made by independent makers. And we put that out and the reception was so awesome that um, I decided to keep doing this. And so I've done a full year of them now, uh, marking different uh, Sabbaths and, you know, astrological events. Like we marked the summer solstice, winter solstice spring equinox and each collection is just like really really personal to me and I'm really passionate about them mm -hmm. and so you know now we're doing our second winter solstice round which is very exciting and uh yeah I'm just excited that folks have really enjoyed that too because it's always a little scary to kind of share certain parts of yourself mm -hmm. so yeah just putting yeah. yourself out there in general is terrifying most it of is the terrifying time. why are we in front of a camera I don't know that's a bad idea I mean has anyone met me at Rhinebeck I would run away from you <laughs> it's true. I'd be like, here, come here. say hi to this is an actual person. I'm like, uh, I was better on the Instagram. He was making sheep noises. <laughs> no one will notice me. <laughs> You're like those ghosts that get spooked and they just go stiff and then they fall. Away. <laughs> I should just try it. Just randomly. And then you try to introduce someone I just fall over. <laughs> yes. So be prepared, folks. If you meet Jacob, I'm gonna fall over. He might just like go stiff and like drop. It won't be a death drop. It'll just be falling over. <laughs> <sighs> so okay. anyway, and so because we don't want to talk your ears off like we did last time, uh, we just want to show you a couple more things um, because obviously holidays are fast approaching. So if you have some crafty loved ones, some of our favorite embroidery kits are back in stock. These are by. Rick Frack. Um, she's actually, her name is, hope I'm pronouncing it right, Inge. 
and she's based in Virginia, I believe, and she designs these really beautiful, super witchy embroidery kits. Ooh. You know, and it comes with everything that you need to make your make your piece. So we're really excited that these came back in. And I just have one last little piece of sort of witchy magic to show. Uh, a lot of people have been asking us about moon garlands that we used to carry, and we don't have the original ones anymore. I know Andrew Mari has one in the back of her videos, and I'm sorry, but we now collaborate with um, an artist based in, in New York. I think she might be in Brooklyn, but in New York State somewhere <laughs> near the city. And so she makes these beautiful um, hammered, hand-cut, uh, like different moon decorations and this one's not her garland this one is you know one of the wall hangings but it's really beautiful with a piece of quartz and so if you are like us obsessed with the moon it's a little pretty something mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. so that's what we wanted to show off and then our last thing is the what are you working on oh yeah <gasps> we gotta do that um so it's holiday season, so I am working on a holiday gift for someone who's never gonna watch this podcast. So I can show it off. I'm knitting a scarf. I hate knitting scarves, I'm gonna be honest. I <laughs> hate knitting scarves. Um, but this is a really simple scarf with a slip stitch detail. And this just mm -hmm. uses two skeins of Malabrigo Rios. I promise I will write this up and get it on the website because um, it's super easy and the color that I'm using is Nimbus Gray in Malabrigo Rios. So you can see like the really nice variegation. And it's just super simple. So hopefully the person I'm making it for likes it. Mm -hmm. If not, I'm taking it back. And it's going to be hers. That's right. What are you working on? Oh, well, I'm not like you and the person that I'm going to be making this for is never going to see it. They're actually sitting next to me. Um, <laughs> no one ever knits for me. I'm so that excited. is why I did it, but I'm also designing it at the same time. So literally this is just going to be 100% all of me. Um, I'm so excited to see this. Okay, so it's not on needles right now because I was making sure that it fit me this morning and like that it was a good fit. So here's the thing. So he's actually not shown me this at all before and he's been texting me all week being like, I wish I could show you, I wish I could show you. Oh, I'm texting random other people instead because I don't know how to cope with not showing my knitting. So I'm very excited. Obviously I like the color already. Ooh. Oh my God, it's beautiful. Yay. Sorry, this is I love fall. it. How gorgeous. And it's I'm so excited. And being a cowl so it'll go around like this. Ooh. And I wanted it to be interesting kind of from all angles. So like towards the side of the neck, you'll have this lovely little cable detail. Yay! And then it'll be seamed in the back together. Hooray! I'm so excited. Yay! So hopefully in a couple episodes, I will be wearing this beautiful cowl. Aw, thank you. I'm so excited. I don't have your handed gift here okay. to show, so that'll and it'll be, be a different. surprise. I'm just terrible at surprises. Ask Jeremy. He's gotten almost all of his birthday presents two weeks before. And he's already started to get Christmas presents, so. That's how it goes. Yeah. And then I end up having to spend more money so we actually have something to open during the time. So maybe you need to give the gifts to me and I don't give them to you until. No, I started shipping them to my mom's house. There you go. There you go. That works. All right. And so before we wrap up, we had a question from one of our viewers asking about knitting with two yarns held together. Um, and I just wanted to demystify that a little bit. Honestly, knitting with two strands is the same as knitting with one strand. You're just gonna be working with two balls and mm -hmm. pulling um, the yarns together. And one thing that people often ask is, is it easier to wind the two strands together into a single ball? And I have helped people do that before, but honestly, I don't find that it makes it any easier in the end. Uh, I think that the, at least for me, the best way is to just have two separate cakes and just work off of them. But then when you're knitting, you just treat it as a single strand. There's not really a lot of a, a lot of mystery to that. Right. Yeah. And then again, if you want us to answer questions, please comment down below. We will do our best to answer them. Maybe if it's like on our last video and we haven't seen it, it might not be on the one right after. But it'll. We will do our best to answer them. Mm -hmm. Show them your fabulous nails. So, I. I did these after having a glass of wine, so maybe not as fabulous as they could be, but... Oh, no, they're so cute. I'm sad. And Why so, don't we have matching nails? Because we're doing them after we finish filming this. Mm -hmm. Except for you might not have the dots because I don't have the Q-tip like I had at home. <laughs> I see. 
Well, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us for another episode. And we hope that you're enjoying this. Please like and subscribe so that you can keep up with us. And if there's anything specific that you'd like us to talk about, let us know. And we hit a milestone. We got 100 so far. That's true. Thank you so much, everyone. <laughs> you like us. You really like us. I like to make this thing like <laughs> And circle of stitches. And everyone is the one So Jacob and I are walking around the wharf and we sort of keep saying that we're going to show you guys a bit of Salem. So we're right outside my store where we just filmed and now we're going to walk to the other side of the wharf and show you some Salem gorgeousness. And the ship and everything. So we're just getting to the other side of the wharf from the shop. So, here's what we wanted to show you. Look, sorry, my hair is still blowing in the frame. This is a. <laughs> this is Derby Wharf, and it's really beautiful. So, yeah, we just wanted to share. Little tiny piece of Salem and a lot of my thumb apparently because I don't know what it is. <laughs>